So our next speaker is uh, Scott Squires. He's a neuroscience PhD student at the Center for Neuroscience Studies at Queen's University. Um, so Scott studies the basics and clinical neuroscience of rumination, which is defined as the mental state of repetitive cyclical thinking about causes and consequences of distressing feelings, unfavorable experience and stressors and unachieved goals. So uh, Scott, I'm very excited about your talk. Please take it away. You are muted, I think. Okay, there we go. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, mentation rate during resting state fMRI and trait depressive rumination. Is there a difference between depressed and never depressed individuals? Uh, before I get into that, I just wanted to use this opportunity to uh, plug uh, this research network that I'm a, uh, a trainee for, which is the Canadian Biomarker Integration Network for Depression. Uh, so this is um, a multi-site research network first developed and uh, kind of coordinated by Sydney Kennedy, a psychiatrist with the University Health Network, with the goal of trying to find biomarkers for depression using a machine learning approach, uh, combining clinical data, uh, blood data, brain scans, and so on, and then trying to find individualized treatments for people uh, based off of these data. Uh, there's um, a multitude of studies. We're now on to uh, study number 15 from the CanBind initiative, uh, but today I'm going to be talking about CanBind 4, which was um, collected at Queen's University. Uh, so the, the uh, I just wanted to also show this picture because it just shows how big the group's gotten. Uh, this was taken in Toronto a few years ago. I'm all the way um, here in the back, uh, right here. So, and Sydney Kenny's a little bit here. So that's kind of just like uh, uh, a bit of an analogy of kind of how far separated I, um, I am as a trainee from the top <laughs> uh, kind of levels of this organization, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, Okay, I can't. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Um, so, major depressive disorder um, is characterized by depressed mood, anhedonia, weight loss or weight gain, insomnia or hypersomnia, psychomotor agitation or psychomotor retardation, fatigue, feelings of worthlessness or excessive inappropriate guilt, concentration difficulties or indecisiveness, and then recurrent thoughts of death, suicide. Um, or suicide attempts. Um, you need five out of nine of these symptoms, um, and one of the first two, uh, you have to endorse one of the first two where we get a diagnosis of major depressive disorder. And this disorder is um, clearly debilitating to the individual, but it also uh, creates problems with um, academic and career functioning, uh, interpersonal difficulties, health-related problems, and financial difficulties, both for the individual, their family, and society as a whole. Um, what I'm interested in studying, um, as was mentioned in the introduction, is cognitive rumination, or specifically in this case, depressive rumination, which is a mode of responding to distress that involves repetitively and passively focusing on symptoms of distress and on the possible causes and consequences of these symptoms. And the idea here is that by co constantly dwelling and cyclically thinking about negative experiences, uh, it, 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 it increases negative affect, um, reduces motivation to complete uh, instrumental tasks, uh, it, it, it uh, impairs problem solving and creates friction in social relationships. And these factors all combine together to increase the risk for depression. Um, the uh, depressive rumination as defined by the response uh, styles theory is commonly measured with the ruminative responses scale of the response styles questionnaire. Uh, this was originally developed in 1991 as a 22-item version, um, and, but the instructions are still the same today. Uh, so it's a one, one to four Likert scale, and basically participants are asked to respond to a bunch of general statements um, related that covers how they respond to whenever they feel down, sad, or depressed. Um, and this uh, measure was first uh, made to uh, kind of show the people's responses to in response. Uh, sorry to the negative feelings of experiencing um, uh, a very devastating earthquake in the San Francisco area in the late 80s. Uh, there were multiple criticisms for this study or uh, this questionnaire, mainly the um, confounding depression symptoms with um, depressive rumination. So a 10 item version was created with two factors. Um, brooding is defined as negative aspects of, of self-reflection, 
focusing on abstract why me kind of issues and obstacles that um, to overcoming problems. So this could be like thinking, why am I deserving this? Thinking about re recent situations, wishing they had gone better. Why can't I handle things better? And then there's uh, reflection or pondering, which is emotionally neutral or positive aspects of self-reflection, focusing on understanding oneself and situations on problems. And these can be like, uh, responding to, I analyze recent events and try to understand why I am depressed. I go someplace alone to think about my feelings and I write down what I'm thinking and analyze it. Um, so when uh, thinking about rumination, a common uh, issue uh, where people who experience high rumination is that it's a repetitive and recurrent thought process that's difficult to disengage from. And when understanding kind of the processes of rumination, it's important to define what a thought actually is. So a thought is a transient mental state or a sequence of mental states that are cognitive and are emotional and can be described in terms of their contents and the relation that a person has with those contents. So these can be everything from perceptions, beliefs, fears, imaginings, memories, and so on. And because thoughts are defined in this way in terms of their contents, that means that a change in thought could ostensibly be measured objectively as a change in ongoing categorical representations encoded within neuroimaging data. However, instead of uh, defining a priori, which categor categorical representations are being adjusted um, uh, as a function of rumination, uh, one thing uh, what we can do instead is it is possible to track holistic changes and semantic transitions by examining whole brain network activity transitions. And the rate at which these network activity transitions can serve as a measure of mentation rate, also known as thought turnover rate. Now, in calculating mentation rate, um, it leverages uh, the 15 network templates created by the Human Connectome Project. So this was created uh, in 2013 uh, by 812, or using 812 healthy young adults that sat and did a 15-minute uh, resting state scan. And then uh, group independent component analysis was ran um, on the resting state data to find 15 uh, spatial networks. Uh, these spatial networks um, will be useful for uh, defining uh, the thought transitions uh, as I'll describe in a second. So uh, to take these, uh, this, uh, these 15 networks and reduce them down to um, a dimensional space that's easier to work with, uh, we implemented a technique known as um, T-distributed uh, stochastic neighbor embedding, uh, which is a nonlinear dimensionality reduction technique for embedding high dimensional data into either two or three dimensional space, but in this case we did two dimensions. And when applied to um, the time series of resting state fMRI data, it, it looks something like this, where um, if you can imagine on the left, um, uh, your 15 network representations, so it's in 15 dimensions, not two as it's shown there, um, is moving around in this 15 dimensional network space um, during rest. And uh, for at every time point, so every TR, um, every volume, I should say, um, it's creating a point in these two in this two dimensional space. So if there's not much connectivity or connections within uh, the content that you're thinking, they'll, they'll show up as um, disparate points. But if there is um, a thought that someone is holding onto for a long period of time, it serves as an, an attractor within this network space. And you can see that they start chaining together um, every volume to create um, a metastable time point. So here's an example from um, the study that validated this technique from members of my lab. Um, and what they, this is an example of a two-dimensional representation of the 15 network space and um, in yellow is the beginning of the of the scan and in blue is the end of the scan so every um, TR there's a new dot added to the um, uh, this grid here uh, the maxis don't really matter because it's just a, it's a multi-dimensional space but uh, the idea here is that as they cluster together into these chains they form metastable time points which are separated by metastate transitions as person um, engages in a different thought. So this is validated using a movie paradigm uh, where using the Hangman Connect Home Project data set, um, participants were just uh, passively watching a movie and um, 
from time point to time point, step distance vectors were calculated. And essentially, um, in this two dimensional space, rapid changes in the step distance vector shows up as a spike. And it, and it happens to salient things in this movie paradigm. So whenever there was um, a, a, scene, a, the, a scene change, or there was an event that happened within the scene, or there was a camera cut or something new was added to the information or there was something visually changing, uh, there were, this could be decoded from this two dimensional network space. Um, so uh, using this technique, I was interested in figuring out is trait rumination, both brooding, both brooding and reflection predictive of mentation rate at rest? And does this depend on whether the individual is depressed? Uh, so 88 depressed and 63 never depressed from the CanBind 4 study were used for this um, analysis and the ruminative responses scale was used to measure rumination. Uh, mentation rate was calculated um, as I was just describing. So it was a 10 minute resting state scan and then using um, FSL's dual regression technique, those uh, 15 networks from the human connectome project were regressed back onto the subject level data. And then uh, TSNE was done um, to uh, reduce the data. This was done a hundred times and the average was um, calculated for the mean step distance vectors. And then to detect the metastate transitions, uh, Mahalanobis distances and then 2D network space was calculated across those time points and a peak finding algorithm was used on the step distance vectors to identify the transition time points that occur at the boundaries of metastable time points. 0 0.06 prominence threshold was used to define the metastate transitions and then vectors were inverted in the peak width of 10 with um, 10 continuous um, uh, levels that aren't in transition was defined as the metastable time points. These were then uh, divided by the time series to get the, the mentation rate per minute. Uh, multi multiple linear, linear regression was done um, uh, to basically look at brooding and reflection as predicting these um, mentation rates controlling for age and sex. So looking at main effects, uh, both uh, reflection and brooding were higher in the depressed group, but there was no significant difference in mentation rate. Um, but looking at this in the multiple regression model, um, it was statistically significant, um, uh, accounting for um, almost 11 per, or a bit more than 11 percent of the variance in the uh, network transition rate. And looking at the group results, the same thing we as I just showed you, there was no difference even with these other factors in the model. Um, but uh, and with reflection, there was no significant association with mentation rates. Uh, but interestingly, with brooding, what we see is a statistically significant result where uh, each point on the brooding subscale was associated with 0.09 fewer network transitions per minute. Um, so be basically, the more that people um, self-reported brooding on average, uh, the more uh, at rest they were um, reducing, or the, at rest they were uh, having fewer thought transitions, essentially. So in conclusion, trait depressive rumination that is characterized by brooding but not reflection is associated with a slower resting mentation rate, whether someone is currently depressed or has never experienced an episode of depression before. Um, a major limitation of the study is the fact that um, they were doing a resting state scan. Uh, they weren't ruminating in the scanner. So, um, or they might've been, uh, but we weren't, we weren't um, inducing them to ruminate in the scanner. So future directions um, will investigate whether this association indexes the repetitive recurrent nature of brooding by assessing state rumination within an fMRI rumination induction task. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. This is a very interesting talk. And uh, let's see if anyone has asked questions. I strongly encourage people to ask questions. Um, while we're waiting, I'm going to ask uh, a little bit. Uh, this is very interesting to me because I also do um, nonlinear dimensionality reduction with the fMRI and, and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, so TSNE is a little bit, uh, has some stochastic components in it. And uh, I'm wondering if, uh, as you're changing some of the, um, um, if you would change the dimensionality of, of the uh, embedding or you're running multiple different, I think there's also like perplexity or something like that in the, the if you change this parameter, how much would that affect uh, your result? Okay, so I um, didn't uh, manipulate uh, perplexity to see how it affected the results because um, the uh, previous study that I uh, presented 
um, at the beginning that validated this technique um, on the fMRI time series. Uh, it, uh, th sorry, I should say they, my uh, the co-authors on this project, um, tested a had no effect on this technique, um, but you're, uh, it is um, something that I am going to do for this data set as well before I prepare these results for publication. Very nice. Um, let's see. Well, only I have the best questions. Uh, <laughs> so um, I think we're about the time. Uh, I would love to uh, talk to you guys individually about research. I'm very fascinated by your research. And thank you so much for giving the talks today. And uh, thanks for the uh, participation.